Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to have a look at the next in our series of testing videos about how to test Logic Apps. So we're going to pivot a little bit away from some of the unit tests and stuff we've been doing. And we're now going to look at end-to-end -end testing. So in this scenario, I've got a website that's going to submit an order. That's going to get written to a service bus queue, which is going to trigger some Logic Apps. Now, there's a couple of logic apps that work together. So I've got a service bus listener. I've got a processor logic app that does the orchestration. And then I've got an AI helper that will go and um, process my order and decide whether it's high value or not. And then we'll either save it into Cosmos DB or storage, depending on what whether it's a value order, high value order. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to have a little bit of a look at how we can use Playwright combined with MS test and the logic app testing framework, the open source one, to test our deployed logic apps and do an automated end-to-end -end test. So here we'll start off, we'll take a quick look at my website that's deployed into Azure, so it's running in an app service. Just a quick knocked up um, sample app, you'll notice I'm logged in using Endra ID at the minute, so that's one of the things we'll need to cover in our um, in our automation tests. So I'm going to create a test order here. So we'll create a little order and we'll submit that order. Now the order gets written to a queue behind the scenes and you'll notice I've just got a little, um, a couple of little things on the screen here showing me the order ID. Now, if I go over to my Azure portal here, um, we should be able to see that I've got um, some runs that I can look at. So we'll see that my um, my order got picked up by this service bus listener workflow. It's received the message. We've got a compose shape here. Now, just note one of the things I'm doing is I'm actually um, tracking the order ID, so this order ID that got created by the web app, I'm going to write that into um, as a tracked property to the logs, which will help us when we need to um, link from the website to the workflows. And then I'm going to call my order processor workflow down here. That will do stuff with the order. And if we go, um, if we go back a little bit, So my order processor workflow here, you'll see in here that we've um, we've been through, we've called a helper workflow that um, calls my logic app agent that decides what to do with the order, and then we'll in this case it decided it was a VIP order. So we can have a look here. Um, there's a bit of a justification about why the customers decided, you know, why we've decided it's a VIP. We've went and saved that in Cosmos DB, which is where we put our VIP orders. So the question is, how do we test this end-to-end -end process? So here, I'm over in Visual Studio, and I've got a, um, I've got an MS test project. Where, if you notice here, I've added um, some helpers. So I've got um, Microsoft.Playwright.MS test, which is the library where we're going to do the automation. And I've also got the um, integration playbooks logic app standard test framework to be able to go and integrate with my logic apps. Now, there's a whole bunch of tools in here with Playwright um, that would let you sort of um, automate a test. So you can, you know, you can basically spin it up and you can go and point to a website and it'll record a test for you. Um, in today's video, I'm going to leave that outside the scope of this video because there's really good documentation about how to do that in the Playwright website. And the page I'm going to embed this video in will have some links to that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk through this test and we'll basically debug it. So here I've got a couple of helpers at the top for some config and an app insights helper. So what I'm going to do is when the website writes the order to the queue, the challenge is I need to find out which one of potentially multiple instances of my workflow process that specific order. So I'm going to go and look up in App Insights using the order ID 
to find which workflow it was and then I'm going to look up again in App Insights to find out um, which, using the client tracking ID, which other workflows processed off the back of the initial workflow that got triggered. So then I can make assertions about those workflows, which is quite cool. And then you can see here I've got um, a test method for non-VIP orders and one for VIP orders. So we'll have a look at the top one to begin with. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to step through this test and I'm going to talk about what it's doing as we go through it. So just to call that out, we're going to um, execute this test. We're going to call into these helper methods here. So login with Entra ID is going to use Playwright to log into my application. So Playwright will spin up a browser. It'll be in a sandbox, so it's got a um, completely empty session. So we'll have to log in. We'll then fill out the form and I'm going to pass in some values to this helper method because I want it to be a low value order. We're then going to um, query from the page. You know, we, we have that order ID in the page so I can actually get that order ID out of the page here with Playwright looking it up from here. And then we're going to do some logic app um, steps. So let's, um, let's now run an instance of this test and we'll step through this. Okay, so we've just hit the breakpoint there, so let's... So we're now going to have a look at how we do this authentication piece. So if we step into this uh, method here... Now, the first thing we're going to do is, from the config, I've got the URL for Enter ID. So I'm basically going to pass the URL. That'll load up the login screen for Enter ID. I'm going to supply some details. And then we're and the, the URL basically make us redirect back to the application here. So we'll go to that page using um, Playwright here. And then we'll um, so we're using a task to wait until that's um, that screen pops up. And then we're going to redirect after we log in. So you'll notice here the application URL here is just the, the Azure website that we're going to go back to after we've authenticated. So I'm now going to step through, supply my username and password. So if you notice in play right here, we're actually just looking up for text boxes, mapping certain things, supplying a value, and then moving to the next box. And then the, the line we're on at the moment here is where we click the sign in button and then in the UI for Entra we'll then get a prompt saying okay you've signed in do you want to stay signed in so we'll click yes to that and then we'll basically let that page um, navigation complete so this is again just doing a little bit of Entra stuff Okay, so we now, um, I think this method, if I remember right, just lets me wait until the entire page is loaded because um, I want to take a screenshot of the page here. So this is a little um, thing you can do with Playwright where it'll take a screenshot for helping you troubleshoot and diagnostics if you want to know what it actually look like because obviously I can't see the browser open here at the moment. So at this point, we're now logged in. So we now have the UI available. So here we're going to populate the UI. So I'm going to I'm going to use just some fixed values here. So obviously in a real world test, you probably randomize or parameterize these or something like that. But I'm, the key ones I'm going to pass in a price and a um, quantity. So if we fill out the form here, so this is just identifying the fields on the page. And then we're going to basically submit that page by clicking the create order button that you can see highlighted here. Okay, so at this point, we've now submitted the order to the workflow. I think we should be able to um, go back over here. We probably will see, um, see there's a workflow running here. 
yeah so i think that one's finished already so 109 so that's really good um so back in my ui what we're basically going to do on the line i've highlighted now is we're going to look for the order id on the form so here we're looking up based on test id which is like a property in the html you can set so i now know the order id from the form that i've just completed and i can assert that it's a, a good GUID. now this is where you know with the, the logic apps now run this is where we not need to start getting a bit fancy about how we work out which logic app it is so here i've got a helper operation which will go and look up the instance of the service bus listener logic app so I'm passing in my order ID and I've basically created a KQL query here. So if you notice, I'm going to execute this with .NET against log analytics. So rather than traces, we're querying app traces table, but it's basically the same. Just some of the properties are a little bit different. I've extended a bunch of columns here, like the order ID, action name, workflow name, etc. And what I'm looking for is down here, I'm looking for the workflow end event for this logic app, for this workflow, for this action, where the order ID equals the one that I specify. Now, what I need to be aware of is when I run this KQL crew, the login's async, so it may not be in the log yet. So I need to pull this query. Um, and what I've done, I've wrote a little helper method here where I'm going to basically execute the query and if it doesn't return any results so we'll see what it comes back with i've been chatting so it may have already got results but often it'll not get them first time uh we're, we're in we're in here so if it didn't get results i'll just wait 30 seconds and try again up, up for five minutes because I, I think sometimes that can be quite a good delay um but because i've been chatting we're in a good place so i return my table here and so now we check this isn't null so we know we've got a query result and here i'm going to get the first row and i'm going to get the run id so this gives me the run id for the service bus listener logic app that executed process in this order and i'm also if you look on the next row i'm also going to get the client tracking id because i want to look up other workflows later that that logic app called so we should have um, now we've got both of those values now what i'm going to do next i'm going to make some assertions against this service bus listener so i'm going to pass in the uh, run id here and this is where i'm going to use the logic app test framework that i built which can test my deployed logic app so i'm going to pass in the name of the logic app i want and then I'm going to pass in the run ID that we found from the log query. Okay, so that loads up the run history. And now I can make some assertions about this. So I'm going to check the trigger status was successful. And here we've got the action that called the process logic app. We'll check that was successful as well. Okay, so we know our service bus... Um, listener workflow executed as we expected so we can now um now we can go and look at the other workflows as well now I, I don't necessarily need to do these sequentially i could have looked for that completion of the service bus listener later if i wanted to um i can mix and match depending on what my needs are but here what we're going to do next is we're going to look up using the client tracking id other workflows that got executed so if we step into that you'll see i've got a kql query here we extend some properties and the key thing is we're looking for the workflow run end where the client id matches the one we expect so we'll just um, step through my query here we got some results straight away because we know the logs are already logged okay so what i'm going to do now is from that result so if you see here i've got like nine different rows so we've got different workflows that got called you know because the ai called a bunch of tools and stuff like that so i can assert all those as well if i wanted to the key thing here is i'm looking for the log event for the order processor okay so here we get the run id for that so i've got that here 
And now I can make some assertions against that workflow as well. So here, I'm going to expect that it is not a VIP. So if I step in here, you'll see we load up the run history for this workflow. Then we'll assert the trigger. So the trigger was successful. This step here is going to assert that the agent was called successfully. And then basically, depending on whether the agent told us it was VIP or not. So if it's not VIP, I expect it to go down and call my storage action, which is this one here. So I'll know that I've successfully saved that message to storage. And in this case, I now know both my processor and service bus listener were effective. Now, in the real world, I might also do additional tests here. So I might use... Um, in my case, I'd just go and look in the storage account maybe, but I could perhaps do something like um, go and call another web application to check that I can query the order from the application and the values are as I expect. I could do all that with Playwright. Um, but it's really just a case of um, automating the UI on top of automating the integration test turns this into a full end-to-end -end test. So in this case, if I continue my test here, You'll see we um, will have a um, successful create non VIP order. And I've also got to test that for the VIP order, which is basically exactly the same. I just supply higher values and I check it goes to Cosmos instead. So, hopefully, this is a really nice little video showing you how you can bring UI automation into your integration test to turn it into a full end to end test. Um, Playwright's pretty cool, and I hope you enjoy it.